welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. I have a sewing compilation video for today. I have 10 easy sew projects. Some you could use your scrap fabrics with, but all of them are perfect if you are a beginner. So if you're new with your sewing machine, I hope you get some inspiration from this video. There will be timestamps so you don't have to make all 10 of these projects. And for my OG followers, you may have seen some of these projects before because I pulled them from the dainty archives. And if you're new to my channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you come across my future videos I upload on a Thursday and a Sunday. Let's make a table runner for my table and you can customize this to any size. The fabric I'm using is Tilda and I get my Tilda fabric from the Crafty Fox. They're in Drotted but they deliver all throughout Ireland as well. So as you can see I have a round table and I just want to do a small straight runner. I don't have much of an overhang, in fact I don't have any overhang because I didn't buy enough fabric but also I have a cat. And what happens when fabric hangs? Cats like to play with them and pull it off the table. So I'm just measuring out. I did mine 13 inches wide and then the length of my tabletop. So your table is going to be a different size and you can completely customize this to however you want it. After my fabric is cut to size, I am going to be hemming all four corners, but I'm going to be mitering um, each four corners. Now, if you're a beginner, this might be a bit confusing, but give it a try. I encourage you to try it because mitering the corners just gives you a nice polished finish and you can follow this same steps if you are doing napkins. Now, I was gonna make napkins, to match like the table set but I was like this fabric is too pretty for people to be wiping their faces in it so I kept the rest of the fabric because I've got some other stuff that I want to sew and I just think this floral fabric is so pretty so I'm going to just show you how I am moisturing the corners I hope you will be able to follow how I do it but I encourage you to even practice on a bit of scrap fabric as well <laughs> Once I had mitered all four of my corners, I brought it to my sewing machine. I actually just ironed the hems nice and perfect before taking it to the sewing machine and stitching, top stitching all the way around all four corners of my table runner. And then I styled up my table, which you can see, and my red tulips were my treat to myself on Valentine's Day. They're from Tesco. I bought myself now a bunch of red tulips and my table set up is yeah, I, I wasn't having anyone over that day. Um, no romance. <laughs> it was all for the YouTube video. <laughs> also, if you're enjoying this video, please do hit that subscribe button and check out my other videos. And welcome to the community. Stumbling out of bed and I still got you in my head From all those pretty words you said It's like I'm wasted Every time I see your face, I'm losing track of time and space. I don't know where I am. It's like I'm wasted and I won't waste it. And I promise that I, I will stand by you forever. I can't get you out of my
let's turn this tea tin into a sewing tin. So in Ireland, it's quite common to have a metal tin with bits and bobs in it. It's normally a biscuit tin. <laughs> and you're very disappointed when you look in it and there's no biscuits, but there be a needle and a thread. So I'm gonna play upon that. And I'm gonna use this as a sewing tin, but we're gonna make a pin cushion for the top. First thing I did was I painted the tin and I'm using just a chalk paint tester pot. When it comes to like painting metal and crafty bits, Chalk paint is really good. I don't really like it on furniture, but I do like it for small projects like this. Now, I'm gonna stitch out, stitch out? Cut out on my Cricut a stitching, like a sewing bits and bobs sign for the tin. Now you may notice, cause I didn't make a mistake, the font that I originally used is not the same as the finished product because I made a mistake when cutting my vinyl. To make the pink cushion, I cut out a piece of cardboard. It's actually off the back of one of my bulb packets and I had some decorators sponges in my craft kit. So I'm cutting out a piece of sponge and I'm gonna glue the sponge to the piece of card. Then I'm going to, it's almost like mini upholstery. I have a piece of fabric, a scrap piece of fabric is perfect for this. So I stick the sponge to the card, I turn it over, I pop it on some fabric and then I start gluing the fabric to the back and then I glue the pincushion onto the top of the tin and don't worry if your edges are not perfect because I noticed mine were not so perfect but hey we're not here for perfection so I used a little bit of trim that I had in my stash to tidy up the edges. I just wanna share a little tip. When you're placing your vinyl sticker onto the tin or a painted surface, make sure it's sealed and it's it had a lot of time to dry because what can happen is if you stick your vinyl on, it might lift off the chalk paint. So I highly recommend using like a clear poly sealer or some wax and allow it lots of time to dry.
after cushions, we are going to be using some laminated cotton fabric. So this is painter's cloth or drop cloth, but you can see that the inside has like a lamination to it and that's going to give us some protection from a light shower. I'm also going to be using some old pillows that I had and I'm just going to be folding them in half. If you do want to make these, I am using a thicker tread, um, just something that a thread kind of like you would use on denim, just because the fabric is a little bit thicker. So I am just making my shape. So I'm going to pop the measurements that I used on top, but obviously it's going to be different depending on the size of your pillows. I'm also using the existing hem on the drop cloth. And for that other hem, I just use a scalloped edged shears so that it won't fray. But this laminated fabric doesn't fray um, as much as like a normal cotton. So I've measured the two sides and I'm doing a straight stitch down both of them before I make the flap on top. Before turning it the right way out, I just clipped the corners so you get a nice pointy edge. And now you'll see when I turn it the right way out, I'll have to just fold and straight stitch the excess fabric on either side, which you'll see me do now. The Velcro that I am using is actually a self sticky Velcro. So some Velcro you get, you have to stitch it on. You could also use like your glue gun, um, but this one actually, um, it dries itself. So there's like an adhesive already on the back. So I'm just lining it up. Now, a little mistake that I actually made is I didn't have enough Velcro for my two cushions. If you're making these yourself, use a Velcro strip that goes across the whole length and not just like the middle bit that I have done. I only did this just because I didn't have enough Velcro and I wanted to finish the project for you. So Velcro the whole side. Now, I am also making mine fancy. So I'm using my Cricut and I'm just using some iron on vinyl, um, heat transfer vinyl, I think that's what it's properly called. And I just pulled some designs that's already in the Design Space Studio. Um, I'm not really good at making my own, so I tend to just grab what's already there. And I just printed it and I weeded it. Now the designs I picked, there was a little bit of weeding to do. So once all the weeding was done, I lined it up on the fabric and and I went with like a 150 degree setting. Um, I was a little bit nervous of the laminated fabric on the inside if it was going to melt, but it didn't. So I'm just using the heat mat and I warmed the fabric first, then I stuck the design down and then I peeled it off. And I won't lie, I'm always too eager and you're supposed to wait for it to cool down before you peel but I get too excited, but do wait for it to cool down <laughs> before you peel it. And then I popped in my pillows. So I used one pillow, just folded in half to stick in, but you can totally customize this project to whatever size you want. Let's make a book bag. So I'm actually just making a drawstring bag. I'm using it to pop books in as gifts. However, these are perfect for if you have, if you're going like to the gym, if you're traveling, or if you want to pop like runners and things inside. So you're going to have two pieces of fabric and I'll put the dimensions of mine in the description box. And you're going to measure down equal on either side, three inches. Again, pop the measurements in the description because you're going to stitch all of the three sides, so side, left side, bottom and right side, but you're gonna stop and you're going to leave some fabric on the top because we are gonna fold this down to make a tunnel for our drawstring. So 
now for the kind of fiddly bit, we're going to do teeny tiny hems on all four of these pieces of fabric so we're going to do hems so that when we fold this over we have a nice tunnel and all of the raw edges of the fabric is going to be like stitched in so you're not going to get any kind of like whispers whispers whiskers of fabric as I like to call it so those raw edges so fold it in once fold it in again I'm just popping in a pin and I'm going to straight stitch all four of these pieces of fabric the tunnels and then we are going to fold them over which you're going to see next So now we're going to work on the top. So I'm folding over another teeny tiny hem again, folding over, folding over again, folding it in half onto, I hope it makes sense how I'm explaining this. And this is going to be our tunnel. So use your iron, your iron will hold all of these kind of like hems into place and then use your pins as well. And take your time doing this because you want this to be like nice and neat because this is where your drawstring is going to be going through. So you're gonna do it on this side and then we're gonna turn it over and do it on the other side. So teeny tiny hem on top and then you're going to fold it over and then you're going to pin it in place so if you saw my earlier project where I was making the curtain we are just making that hem that we are then going to be folding over and then you're going to do a straight stitch down the side of both of them and then we will have made our tunnels and next step is to pop through your cord or whatever you want to use for the drawstring I'm just using my scalloped edge shears, like a pinking shears, only mine is scalloped edge, just for the raw edges, but you can finish off the seam if you have like an overlocker or you could do a zigzag stitch and I'm just cutting off any excess, just tidying it up basically, any excess fabric or whiskers and I just clip the corners as well. So give it a good iron, turn it the right way out and we are going to pop through the drawstring. I am using some faux leather. It's like a strip of faux leather that I had in my stash. And I'm going to pop it through. You'll see now, so you put, you have two pieces. So if you're using like cord or leather or whatever it is, you have two pieces. Now, you, it's best to use a safety pin to put your fabric or your ribbon through the tunnel. I just could not find a safety pin but thankfully this leather was nice and stiff sorry this faux leather was nice and stiff and I was able to put it through handy enough so you'll see that I put it through one side so I go in on the left I go around and I come back out on the left and I tie a knot then I start on the opposite side so I go in on the right around through the left and back out on the right and then I tie a knot in the end and there you're going to have your two pieces of your drawstring and you just pull them and you have your bag made.
I'm going to be taking an old bed sheet, the good old fitted bed sheet, and I'm going to use the fabric from this bed sheet to make a curtain to sit over my washing machine. To make a curtain, you are going to need one of these curtain rod thingamajiggies, don't know the name, but I will link to one in the description. It was only a couple of euros. Now, if you're using recycled fabric, give it a wash before you use it and give it a good iron because it's probably going to be quite wrinkly. Here is the corner that I am going to be making my curtain for. I will link to the video where I was doing my little mini laundry nook kind of makeover and I said that I was going to make a curtain just to hide the washing machine. I am taking measurements for the width and the length and I added some extra inches for the tunnel at the top and for my hem and the seam allowance on either side and the bottom. I will put the dimensions to my curtain but it's obviously going to be different depending on where you're going to put yours. So just measure across for the width, add on an inch or two for your seam allowance, measure the length and then add on extra for the tunnel on the top. So I am just putting my measurements onto the fabric and then I'm giving it a cut. The hardest part of this project is just working with a lot of fabric. So if you are a beginner and this is your first time to make something a little bit bigger, it can get a bit frustrating, <laughs> I suppose, having lots of fabric, but just take your time and the cutting is probably the most important. So once you have everything cut, you can then hem the side seams first. So I'm just doing a hem so I'm folding over the raw edge and then I'm folding it over again on top of itself and I'm doing a straight stitch down either side. So to start with, do your side seams. So to make the tunnel on the top for the wire, the curtain wire to go through, you just gonna fold it over. Now I'm using the existing hem that was on the bed sheet. You are gonna have to fold over the raw edge and then fold that again so that the raw edge is tucked in. But I use the existing hem, so I kind of cheated a little bit just to save me some time. So I'm just folding it over. As you can see, the hem there is already hemmed. You would have to fold that over if you didn't already have a hem on the fabric that you're using so like if you're using recycled fabric um, or if you're using normal cotton you're not going to have a hem on it so I'm doing a straight stitch all the way down just following that folded line and then that is going to give us a tunnel once that is in I will give it one little measure against the washing machine just to make sure that you know the width is good do I need to you know take anything off and then I'm going to hem the bottom so last thing you're going to do before we stick this on is hem the bottom I am using a wire cutter to cut my, I'm calling it a curtain rod, but I'm sure there's a proper name for it. Um, but you get these little twisty hooks for the end and don't worry, you can still adjust this. So I put mine on and as you can see when I put it against the washing machine, I had a big droop. So that's okay, just tighten it. So just take your wire off cut it there's a little tiny bit of stretch in it stick the hooks back on and also I have two little nails so there's a nail on the left and a nail on the right in the wood that I hook on the curtain rod hook too so have a little play around with this and then you're good to go take this circular L'Occitane gift box and we are going to be using some wood and fabric to create the cutest little basket. 
I picked up a long strip of wood. It's a half dowel wood molding and I picked it up from my local DIY shop and I'm just measuring it out and marking it where I want to cut it. So I measured the side of the box and it was three and a half inches. So I'm cutting loads of pieces of half dowel that is three and a half inches and then we are gonna stick these onto the side of the box. So let's make the fabric insert and you're going to have two pieces of fabric for this. You're going to have a circular piece that is the same size as the bottom of the box and then you're going to have a long strip which is the side piece. Begin by hemming one of the raw edges on one side of the long strip of fabric. Next you're going to fold this over with the pattern side of the fabric facing each other and do a straight stitch. Now for the more tricky part, you are now gonna stick the two pieces of fabric together. And all you have to remember is pattern sides of the fabric facing each other and you can't go wrong. So take your time and use loads of pins, but you're gonna sandwich the two pieces together and you're gonna do a stitch right around the circle and as you'll see, it will start to come together. Once you have this all sewn together, simply pop it inside of your basket and then just gently pull the fabric over the edge and use it for whatever you want. So if you wanna use it for like toiletries or for storing some makeup, hairbrushes, etc., there's lots of uses for a cute little basket. I'm going to show you how to make a fabric liner for a basket. This basket, I think it might have been 150. It's from the kind of Pep and Co homeware section in Deals or Poundland if you're in the UK. And I'm going to make a fabric insert, which is quite easy to do. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to copy the basket and you're going to copy all four sides of the basket and a base. So you're basically making a basket but just in a fabric version. So I measured out the side and I added on some extra inches for the top and this is for the overlap. Now the measurements is going to be different for your basket because maybe you're using like a different one. But once my measurements are drawn on, I'm folding it over because I'm going to cut two of the side pieces and then two of the smaller side pieces and then one piece of the bottom of the basket. So I hope it makes sense but I'm basically making a basket but just in fabric and I'm using the basket as my template. It's always a good habit to iron your fabric before cutting, but if you are like me and you are a little bit lazy, you can iron it before you stitch. But generally ironing before you cut means that you're getting a nice perfect cut with no kind of like wobbles from any wrinkles. 
To assemble the basket, all you have to remember is right side of the fabric facing each other and you're essentially going to construct the side of the basket. So match up the seams, pin them and right sides facing together. So if you have a wrong and a right facing together, you know it's wrong. So the pattern fabric is all facing together and you're going to do a straight stitch down all four corners of your fabric and this is going to give you the surround of the basket and we're then going to add the base. So if you think about it, you're constructing like a 3D basket in fabric form. Once all of your seams are stitched, it's a good practice to iron your seams nice and flat. And then we're gonna put the base in, which is probably the trickiest bit. So if you are a beginner, take your time with this. And again, remember, right sides, pattern sides, facing each other and you can't go wrong. So if you're making this, just keep saying that right sides of the fabric facing each other. And you can see that the box shape is starting to take like shape, box shape, starting to take shape. You know what I mean? And then we're gonna stitch all the way around the bottom and you have essentially created a nice basket shape. Now all we have to do is hem the top of the basket but you can just pop it in and make sure that you are happy with how it's looking because you can do like a bigger hem if you want to make it like shorter. Um, but I'm just doing a good old fashioned hem, folding it over once, folding it over twice, pinning it, going to take it to my machine and do a top stitch all the way around. You can do use a pinking shears um, to finish off the hem or the raw edge of the inside of the basket. To be honest, this is the inside of the basket and you're not going to see it, so I didn't. But it is a good habit when you're sewing to have nice um, like raw edges, like you want to have them nice and trim. Um, but for this project, you're not going to see it, so I just hemmed the top. I just wanted to nip in the corners of my basket because as you can see it was a little bit wide. So you can hand stitch this but I just pinned in each corner, took it to the machine and just did a straight stitch. And this just gave it like a little bit more shape and it just kind of nipped it in. You can still, once I do the stitch, you can still easily take it on or off. You could also add some elastic if you wanted to do like an elastic kind of basket top. Um, you would have to put that in you would have to make a casing when you're doing your seam but to keep it nice and simple I'm just nipping in the corners and if your pattern was maybe a bit big you could also try this too So that is 10 sewing projects. I have an older video that has another 10 sewing projects that I'm gonna pop a card here. So if you still want some sewing inspiration or if you're looking for, you know, scrap fabric, you can use like recycled fabric. I'm always like seeing what I have um, before I dig into the floral fabric stash pile. So another video for you to check out. And don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all in the next one.